Now we're going to paint a rainbow trout, in this case, three at once. Fill the fish with a base coat sealer. It'd probably be easier uh, if you have the stick by hand and, you know, just spray it real good. You get it however you need to get it. a couple of trout that are already painted white and so we're going to do three at once. Having on a stick is so much easier. You get under the belly, in the jaw, side of the face, fins. You don't have to sit there and worry about moving and tightening and loosening bolts and all that stuff. It's good for getting inside the gills too. It's priceless for getting inside the gills. You can get the top of the back real good. A lot pearl. And you just pearl the whole fish, make it real good and pearly. And you can hold it too, just like, you know, before. Like with the white. You go ahead and hold it by the stick and you can get every part of it real fast. Pearl going on there real good. Make sure you got a good coat of pearl on your fish. I guess you can put it on too strong, but uh, just make sure you see it. You want to make sure you see it. That's the purpose of putting it on. And lash the finner on a Q-tip, and you might want to roll it just once to get out the excess wetness. In other words, you want to clean it off, but you don't want it to drip. So a lot of times I'll just get, uh, get a Q-tip with a lacquer thinner and uh, clean my eye off. I'll go ahead and clean my eye off pretty much from the get-go at least. With the darker colors, it's not going to show up that much, you know, later on. I'm also use an X-Acto knife, something like this, to uh, trim or as close as you can get, you know, you know, to get all the paint off. They work really good. Silver metallic. And uh, you can see it on Rainbow Trout. You can see that little bit of silver around the... Where it's a little bit darker sometimes, like there's a transition area between the, I guess the, the lower belly, or the, the belly and the lower side, like right in there, right above the pelvis and pecs, you'll see it. And so it's not wrong to kind of incorporate that. About a, about a medium to light coat. And if you go too dark with it, you can always go over it with like silver pearl or something to light it back up. You also go along the back. Um, I would turn it or even hold it with my hand to do it, but for video purposes, I'm just going to do it like this. You want to fade out by the lateral line. <clears throat> Got like a medium coat. Sure you fade it the lateral line, you'll be completely faded out by the time you get to the lateral line. With all fish, I tend to like go around just the very bottom of the eye, then I work my way up to stay kind of like up on top of the gill flap a little bit, and then I come down just to here. And uh, it's kind of like the way I do all my all my fish as far as when I paint the back. You want to be completely faded out by the time we get to the lateral line. All these fish are, are a little bit dark on the face anyway, so I don't care to put a little bit of metallic on there. And anything you do you don't like, you can always correct it later. That's for sure. Same thing on this side. 
I see that little dark area, kind of abrupt. Uh, you know, it's on the side of the fish. Goes all the way to the tail, but it's like that area right above the, the pecs and uh, right above the pecs and uh, pectorals. Or the, I guess you could say the upper part of the belly. And you just kind of fade out by the time you get to the ladder line. Even if you cover the ladder line, it's no big deal. Uh, I think the main thing we're looking at is, uh, with, you know, a good reflective base. But you do see that darkness, and silver metallic uh, replicates that little bit of darkness on the side of the fish. Same thing here. Pretty much on all my fish is, you know, I may uh, go around the eye a little bit, and then I work my way up relatively quick, and then I may come down a little bit where the gill flap and the cheek get, uh, uh, separate a little bit, right here up at the top, and then maybe a little bit down in there. Then I work my way up along the top of the back. This coat, you want it faded out by the time you get to the ladder line. Maybe a little bit above if you don't want the, if you don't want it in your stripe. Probably good to stay above the stripe. Maybe a half. Of course, the belly. Make sure it's good. To, yeah, it's dark enough already. Okay. Now you can stop where you think your stripe's going to be. If you've got one more fish to paint with this silver metallic, and then we'll go to our next color. Yellow ochre. And uh, I like to start on the dip of the nose. Maybe working my, this is a medium coat. You know, going around the eye a little bit. You can go ahead and mist on it. And uh, you can go along the back. This color, I like to go all the way down to where the stripe is, or, or is going to be, pretty much cover all my silver metallic. Not completely, you know, you want it to be shiny still. But what I'm getting at is, so our next color is medium green, and I don't, I don't want the medium green to cover up all the yellow, so it's going to, it's a, uh, Especially as you get closer to the to the stripe, the, uh, the, the pinkish red stripe on the side. I definitely want right above that pinkish red stripe. I want to be able to see some of that yellow. So most of the green is going to be on the back and then fade as you go down the side. But also in my reference pictures, I've seen a little bit of green down here even. So pretty, uh, also yellow. So we're going to incorporate that stuff in too. If you're on top, you don't want to kill out all that pearl, which you can do. And then, uh, definitely want it to show when you go all the way down to the, where the ladder line is going to be. Or even a little above it would be fine. If you want to shut off right just slightly above it, maybe three to a half inch, depending on the size of the fish. Okay, so got my yellow ochre. I like to go a little bit right in here because I see it. Right there where that silver metallic is. We're gonna put violet on there a little bit later. A lot missing a violet, but it never covers up yellow, so they go good together. A little bit on the lower jaw. You would be able to barely see it on the lower, lower end. Uh, just don't go into the belly and keep from it. Put a little bit of yellow down everywhere where the black's going to go uh, later. And around the bottom part in here, just slightly, ever really lightly. Feel to get it. Got a medium coat.
Well, these are opaque colors that we're putting on the back with the uh, medium green and uh, and the uh, yellow ochre. They're both pretty opaque. They can, in other words, they can cover up. So just be careful. You want to see a little of that pearl come through if you can keep it. Feel free to card the pins if you need to. You want to put something up like this if you need to to get your pins painted. Go up and but now the I know some pink stripe usually tapers out right here towards the top. I wouldn't say always, but I know it does a lot. And uh, main thing is get that yellow right up on top, heavier on top, through here like a light coat. You want to see it though. You want to see it because it's there. Of course, all the pins. We'll go ahead and get these other fish and I'll show you what we got. Got the yellow ochre again. And towards the bottom where the black is, I'll put it maybe just a hair on the maxillary. But where the black is going to go later, like not right up in here or right in there, or right down here on the bottom. Lightly, about as light as what you put on the bottom part of the, the side there, below the stripe about that much intensity just a little bit of yellow I mean you barely even know it's there in fact when it goes over that silver metallic it almost seems like it has a greenish kind of hue to it anyway they're pretty much the colors that's going to show on your fish when it's done because really all we got is the medium green and and the red stripe and 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 putting a little bit of red on the fins and you're done so you got to make sure that you kind of pretty much want everything where it is. We're going to put a little bit of violet on it too, but that's what I'm getting at is make sure everything is kind of like how you want it as far as tone and how strong the color is. If you had to lighten your fish up, you still could by just putting, you know, some white, maybe a little white pearl back over it. And make sure it's, you know, how you think it needs to be before you go further. And reference pictures are a good thing to look at. And if it's easier for you, do the sides first before you do the back. That way you'll know your intensity is right. Got my medium green. I already put some on my fins. I don't want to kill the yellow. I know it's very hard to do. But you want the green to show. But you also want the yellow to show a little bit. So my remedy for that is start off dark, dark right up on top, and then just basically almost tint the yellow. When you get down to the lighter one. Top of the head. I guess anywhere you see yellow, you can put a little hint of the green because it shows. I even got my green thin down as a safety measure so I don't. Now remember, we got black going over this too, so. You can see that green. I use a little bit in the lower section. You can barely even tell it. I notice on this one, I got the intensity uh, right along the back. And it kind of fades out a little bit below. The medium green, as far as the fins are concerned, it only goes on the dorsal and the tail and the adipose. I see some reference where it looks like it goes around the eye a little bit, but it goes pretty much straight up top. So you go kind of like right to the eye and stay above the, kind of come up here, stay above the cheek and then above the gill flap. 
and straight up on top of the back is where your sticky stuff is. And then as you graduate down the side, I like to let the yellow show through a little bit. Here I've got my medium green again. I'm going to give just a hint of it right down here below. Basically, make give a little hint of the yellow. This green. I like to do right in here. I've seen it in references. It's a little blushy in there. Right here where it's going to get dark, don't want to kill the yellow out, then just the adipose, dorsal, and the tail get the green. And even then it doesn't have to be a whole lot. And you still want it to look a little bit yellowish, I guess, in the right word. But I guess, I guess you'd say we're toning the yellow. So the little bit of green is showing. I'm going to stay right up on top. You just got to make a conscientious commitment to have control over your head. As far as the side, that right there as far as I'm going to go. You stay up on top. So staying on top of the, the gill and cheek area. I can see where they uh, kind of intersect a little bit. Like and do the same with the other side. I'm stronger up on top. Now I'm on the rear strap and I went ahead and made a faint line right down the middle of the lateral line. It pretty much takes an even amount of space, like above and below the lateral line, but it starts off like real narrow here on the... Yeah, it takes a lot of control with your airbrush. I mean, you can't be moving around much. And whatever you take above, you got to take below. In other words, it's evenly spaced. above as it is below so you want it you want it to phase out and become lighter I like that and uh, whatever you do below you got to do above you know as far as intensity now the far as the thickest part of it should be about right in here you know, you can make a stripe too thick, you know, you gotta... And I'm staggering it, uh, staggering I'm not making it like super perfect. Now we're going to work on the cheek area. As you can see by my reference pictures, they vary quite a bit in intensity. So, let me see, it looks like some of it pretty much from behind the eye. 
Well, here's what I've got so far. And they all vary a little bit. I mean, they're all not exactly the same. You know, as far as where the red's exactly at, intensity, and so forth. Now we're gonna put a little bit of red, more so on these bottom pins. You don't wanna kill the yellow out completely, but you definitely, And feel free to card your fins. Use good reference of your fish to get the intensity you want for your fins. Also. Card your fins. This way. You'll know when you get the color about right the way you want it. And it'll just kind of pop, I guess is the right word. Just a hint on the tail. There's no mistake that you can make, really, that you can't fix. There's, there's one good way to look at it. You'll get that real pretty orangey type look to it, uh, depending on how much yellow you put, too. You just let the color kind of grow on, and you know, just be mindfully aware of how much you set. Uh, going on. We do all your fins that way, top, bottom, front and back. Now what I like doing while I got this red, I want to really miss it, but pretty much Everywhere I've got yellow, I want to off the color just a little bit. The pins a little. Just kind of change the value of the color a little bit. Mainly up on top. Put on light enough, I guess you could say it works about like the way gold toner would work. I'm going to play a little catch up with the other two fish and I'll show you what we've got and then I'll show you what we do next. Oh, well, if you got any gills on your fish, go ahead and Well, here's what we've got so far, and I'll show you what we do next. Now, I do see this in the 10 some paint schedules, but I definitely see it on, especially in the, in the body part, and that's a little bit of the blue going around the red. I've got a uh, shimmering blue, and I'm hoping it's, uh, where it's noticeable. There it is. And basically I just I'm go around my stripe, go above it. And 
and around the cheeks. Okay, now I've got some shimmering violet. I want to put it on the wide. And I can see it. Mainly below the stripe. Either that or you can put like a vague little bit of on it. Right here on the very edge. Right now is a good time for touching up anywhere you might have accidentally, you know, from painting your fins. You may have accidentally got a little bit of something on your belly. You can uh, go ahead and light it out now. And I sure did. I wiped up where I did some damage or where I had a little paint on my belly. And what I'm going to do is go around pretty much like I do with all the crowds. And if you're a little messy with it, don't worry about it because we're going to angle spray a little bit later. And you know, what that's going to do is going to, it's going to shade it out where it looks pretty good. Trace over the grooves in your gill rakers. Something like that. trace this outer edge right here, but I'm probably not going to do it. I'm going to leave well enough alone, I think. Well, when we get caught up on the other fish, and I'll show you what we do next. Also go a little bit in front of the eye, and a little bit behind the eye. Now I put spots on the head of the fish and I would use reference. Uh, if you got reference material that shows you know how many they got on top and how much they got on the side of the head, that would be great. This takes a steady hand. Now they're like dots on the face. Towards the body they start breaking up and doing weird things. I'll get the top of the head and we'll see what we've got.
And what I'm doing is I'm getting the spotting on the fins, uh, uh, spotting on the back first. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about propping my fish up on its side later. Now we do all our bottom fins this way. And we, we, I put a row of spots all the way to the bottom, just above the white. You could have went all the way down and put the white on later, but I didn't. So here's the next one. So they kind of taper out like that. I've done better, but I'll show you again. Yeah, kind of like that. As you get towards the back of the fin, the number of spots tapers. And do all your pectoral and pelvic fins and anal fins that way. You can see some vague uniformity to it, but not much. Try to uh, take your time and evenly space them as possible. I mean, you don't want to do shoddy work you can keep from it. So I'm roughly relating to the line below it, but not much. Okay, there's our completed tail. Wouldn't help to have maybe a reference picture if they want to use their particular fish but sometimes they got spots all over, I mean, through the red stripe and everything. A lot of times, there may be some stripe, uh, spots in the stripe, but a lot of times not as much. 
and basically what we're doing is like connecting like three dots and making V's and T's and stuff like that. Not too out of out of the way. I mean, almost looks like a spot from a distance. If if that helps any, it probably doesn't. But that's kind of what I'm getting at. And I got my air pressure down real low, of course, and got my paint thin down real good. I think what I'll do is go ahead and put the spots in and uh, just dots for now because I could always, you know, dress up the spots and make them not look so round right now. But I'm wanting to right now just worry about where my spot placement's going to be and use some reference and then go back later. And I know I'm coming down into the, the red stripe a uh, little past the, uh, little past the uh, dorsal fin and closer to the anal fin. So, and towards the tail, the spots really, just like on a cutthroat or anything, it's like the spots really build up all over on the back of the tail, regardless of the red stripe. Now I'm going to dress my spots up by connecting other dots to them and making like T's and V's and maybe two. Just going to mess around and do a few things with the spots. I mean, make them where they're not just round. But I don't want to get too carried away. From a distance, they want to look kind of round. Like, you know, from a far distance. Well, I'm going to mess with the spots on top, too. To do the same thing. Maybe take just a little bit of the roundness out. I like to put several spots together. It's easier for me. It's whatever you figure out. I'll get that done. And you can make spots bigger as little as you think that they ought to be. I probably could have went a little bit smaller on my spots. Okay, this is what I got so far. As you can tell. Yep, this is this is what I got so far. I'm gonna go ahead and darken the back. Like a little bit of darkness on my head. Let your reference be your guy, because they're all different. Away, you don't want to do it too much. I'm going to let spray. Hit the lower part of the cheek. The whole part of the heels, let a little bit of angle spray in my work for me. I want to get it on the body. And I don't want him too dark, but I want him. Now, as far as the black, it goes straight up the back. I like to come down, kind of like right to the eye. And then it tends to ride up like this and go up. Maybe dip down a little right here. I just let my airbrush take care of that. And straight up the back. will stay on top of it and you don't want to do it too harshly either. Enough detail for the pen, it don't take much. I go along the very bottom of the pin, the base of it. Straight up the top of the back, on the, right on one side of the spine dorsal. And 
I don't want to get too carried away with it. You want it, you want it noticeable, but that's about it. That's about it. Depending on how dark you want your fish. That's it, I'm using control with this plaque because you can go really too far with it. And I tend to do it a lot. I tend to go too far with it a lot. I'm highlighting all the fins, just like I did those, front and the back. about bringing the rays out in the fin is makes it dark. Okay, we use the moderation of black also in the bag color for if I say the back of your fin, the back of your thing, stuff that's not going to show. Unless you're doing two-sided mount or something, which you, know, you do things a lot different there. Yeah, I had a bad angle uh, trying to get it for the camera, I think. And, uh, but this is good, I'll show you this technique. It's like spotting. And it, it brings the fin back out. And if you do it right, you don't even have to try to highlight them in the center. Basically, it's just going to in between the spots and we'll, we'll get our gold color back to
turn the pin base to the uh, viewer Well, here's what I got. Um, now all I gotta do is clean the eye off. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get caught up with the other fish and show you what I've got. Well, you can see where I uh use my black. Well, I've done it once. I'm gonna do it again. The group is in between the gill rays. Well, here's the finished fish. Now I gotta do is catch up on the other two and I'll show you what I've got. Here's what I come up with on my rainbows. I think they look pretty good. All I gotta do is gloss them. Inside the mouth I put a little bit of, well I had some gill red and uh, put a few drops of black in it. And just to kind of give it a deep red color and I can miss it inside the mouth. Also, I've noticed, and it's in my other tr trout paint, paint, fish paint schedule that I have. It seems like my medium green, like it lays down better, and it's a it's a better color overall to lay my my spots on. If I put a little bit of white in it, if I put a little bit of white in my medium green, it seems like it's a kind of a pretty color to lay my spots on and it seems like I just control my medium the intensity of my medium green seems like I control it better if I got a little bit of white in it. So it makes it a little bit more opaque. Gloss. Show my wax in here. This is gloss top coat. Make sure I get it get inside the map. All we're doing is set my paint first. I'm going to go back over with a heavier coat later. Then go back and put a heavier coat on and then you're done. Let it dry for a few minutes. Here's how I paint more than one fish at a time. Uh, in this case, uh, three rainbow trout. 